All right. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. We don't know what to call it yet. And in this one, I completely rip off the dollop, except this is not a story from American history. This is a story from... French history. Fr- no, it's... Uh, I, te- I, I, I guess technically Kenyan history. Oh. Yeah. Can you not? Can, no, we can. We're going to. Prepare to be harshly judged. Me? Oh, dude, this is awesome, though. This is awesome. So I, I was looking up funny news stories. Did you find any? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Unfortunately, like, so this is really stupid. We're going to talk about this first. I want, I want to put this in the podcast. This is important to me. I found one that was really funny, and it was about how German TSA found 100 giant African slugs in luggage by tracing the trail of slime that it left in the (laughs) airport. (laughs) And they found, not only did they find roughly a hundred giant African slugs in luggage being illegally exported, but they also found several suitcases, like a hundred pounds or something of rotting meat from animals that were poached. So like illegal meat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I, mean, I really wanted to find a story on it and like because it was going to an african some kind of like african resale store in germany but they like actually had stuff from africa that was b- being I- illegally imported what do people use slugs for i don't know uh, but the only use i've ever seen for slugs is in the tv show fringe and they buy them to create bioweapons so like i don't know maybe i don't know what it was i don't know but talk about sluggage but but yeah <laughs> sluggage <laughs> <laughs> good one good one no but they really they found slugs like these things are like literally eight inches long and like girthy slugs like they're big they're giant they're giant slugs and there was like literally like 50 suitcases worth of stuff like meat and slugs but the thing was everywhere that i went to look up information on like the store that it was going are these to the ones that they used in harry potter for the eat slugs <laughs> Uh, no, they're curse. probably bigger. Oh, I think I saw geez. pictures. I think they're bigger. They're bigger than that. They wouldn't fit in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of things don't fit in my mouth. I don't want to think about them. Like going it would be there. as big as your face, roughly. Uh, well, thinner, but like as long as your face. Oh my god! You, you have a long. Why well, have a long face? <laughs> <But> <laughs> because no. I'm thinking about slugs. Slugs. <laughs> no. So I couldn't find any information, and literally, I went through probably like 16 different news services including the big ones like Fox and CBN. And every single one of them had the exact same story. I think you mean CBS. CBN. Did I say CBN? Oh, could be news. Our cousins. (laughs) Could be news. Our cousins had a news show. This shows how much I actually listen to news. (laughs) Nick actually did research and found out it's hard. It's hard. No, 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 no. This is the thing. They were all the same story from the original one that I found. And they all just copied the story. And they did give credit to the original person. But that was it. Nobody had their own story. They all just had random pictures of slugs as like the cover picture with the same headline and then credit to AP, which is like, I don't know, Applied uh, applied Press or something like that. I, I don't remember. Advanced Press or something. Advanced Placement. Advanced Placement <laughs> Press. Yeah. And so I couldn't find any information. It was on actually it. just a question on the AP exam. It doesn't actually exist. Um, and they pulled it from fiction and said it was true. <laughs> But that was the thing I was really disappointed because I wanted to know about the giant African slugs and like the process of finding sludge all over the airport. And they said that like slugs were like peeking out of the luggage, like getting ready for a mad dash. That's the way they put it. That was really funny. A mad dash? I know, slugs. Aren't slugs known for like moving Being slow? really slow. <laughs> Just like TSA? Well, I guess that's snails. Maybe slugs are faster. So it would be like slow speed chase because like, you know, TSA workers are really slow and slugs are also really slow. So it would just that's be like why it took them so long to really, really slow moving chasing. chase. Yeah, really slow chase. Just like moving With a bunch across. of guys behind them going, hut, 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 hut. But they're still moving really slow. Really slowly, yeah. So, so yeah, no, I couldn't find anything on that. I was really disappointed. But there was a clickbait article, and it turns out this was good clickbait. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, October 24th, 1959. Wow, that's almost, like, soon. That's 1959? No, October 24th. Oh. <laughs> that's, like, in a month. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's close. Yeah, no, it's relevant. And this is relevant. This is actually current. This 19, is, this is, 29? 
59? Yeah, that's not close. No, no that's not close. St. <laughs> Mary's Hospital, Jinta, Uganda. Jinta? Jinta. Uganda. J-I-N-T-A, Uganda. There's a lot of names in here that are Kenyan and Ugandan, so there's going to be a lot of botched names. Probably the entire story that this person is... that Sorry, the entire person... This person that this story is about... <laughs> You got it? I'm probably going to botch their name, too. And yeah, we'll... so come after him. Yeah, and, come after uh, me, because I, I didn't... I, I tried to look up the pronunciation. He's white, by the way, yeah. so he yeah, sucks. No, okay. Tito Olio and Melina Makoka gave birth to George Luciri Wajak... Bless you. <laughs> I practiced this so many times. Wajakoya. 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 W A J A C K O Y A H. Yeah, that sounds right. Wajakoya. George's parents, we're going to go with George. <laughs> George's <laughs> parents were of a, uh, diverse backgrounds, having roots in Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. George's mother, Melinia, was born in Butula, Kenya, thus making George a native Kenyan. I, I don't know how they're cultural ties and stuff work because in these countries they don't either imperialism really <laughs> screwed that up yeah pretty much in these countries uh women still don't have like any rights or anything but yeah. for some reason the one right that they have they did recognize the fact that women did go through labor and it was really tough and so they said fine if the woman gave birth to them they get their mother's heritage not their father's <laughs> right so if the man gave birth to them then, then it would be their father's <laughs> right okay that makes but yeah sense. so so I, i'm not sure how that influences and and i guess later on we find out that it's we're not 100 percent sure if george's mother was actually kenyan or not she might have been ugandan uh but you know he was born in kenya that's what matters so um his parents, however, uh, quickly started having issues with each other. Their relationship became very rocky when George was young. Before he was 16, his parents divorced. <laughs> Kids do that. So don't think that having a kid with your, with your significant other is going to solve all your problems. No. no. Uh, in Kenya, it is considered uncustomary for the mother to take the child into her care. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah. So there's no, there's no debate. It's just the, the father gets the, the kid. That's it. Uh, so she was forced to leave George behind in the care of his father, Tito, following the divorce. Uh, she then left for her matrimonial home, and we never hear about her again for the rest of the story. Oh, bye. <laughs> yep, goodbye. Say goodbye. Uh, George had now lost his mother to his parents' divorce, and his father, who was, quote, unavailable, decided to go back to Uganda and remarry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so his father left him in the care of his paternal grandparents in Kenya. Classic dad move. Nice, right? Uh, being left alone with his grandparents and watching his mother and father literally leave him in another country <laughs> didn't sit well with him. Mm. I wonder why. <laughs> he's, he's 16 at this point. He's, he is 16 at this point. Uh, You're old enough to live on your own, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go uh, marry someone. Good luck being an orphan. Else. You're a man now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, and I guess actually at that time, kind of, in the 1950s, like, you know, our parents probably were like, okay, well, they weren't living on their own, but they might, you know, we're doing chores and cooking. Yeah, and, and I think that like the coming of age is like, like, you know, 15 or 16 in a lot of cultures, but still... He's just a kid. His yeah. frontal cortex isn't even fully developed. Well, that um, has no effect on his life. Oh, well, that's going good. Going forward. His brain? Yeah. He d doesn't need it? No, it's he's fine. He's a smart kid. Oh, no, yeah, he's good. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, so when he turned 16, he stowed away to Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. <laughs> doesn't say what he stowed away in. He just... A train? Or he just walked there? Cardboard box. I don't box. know. Cardboard, yeah. Just got shipped. I don't know. So there's a, there's a lot of loose ends in this story. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll come back to that. We will. We come back, we'll come back to that. Uh, in Neorobi, Neorobi. Yeah, that's correct. Neorobi, George uh, joined the Street Children. I don't know if that's a gang. Or, or like a fun kids book, <laughs> like the Boxcar Children. The uh, Street Children. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it's probably not like the fun. Probably like, not. Well, it also says that he joined the Street Children and he learned to trade. 
Ah. Right. Yeah. So he was a traitor, a kid traitor. Not to be confused with a traitor, which is more like his Not to be confused dad. with street rat or stealing. He was a traitor. Yeah. Uh, so He traded. <laughs> and we know this. Absence of things for things that he took for himself. No, so they decided to use the word traitor here instead of stealing. But they also followed that up with, he was rescued from the streets by Hare Krishna. Okay. Rescued. We don't know. I mean, it sounds like he was fine. He was with the street children. Well, but I, he was rescued. I think, you know, living on the streets, you know, you, you, you have to do what you have to do to survive. So somebody plucking you out into real, you know, better, better life yeah. where you're not having to, to, to g- resort to those means to be able to live. Like sure. that technically could be seen as rescuing. The Americans would say it's rescuing because they just, you know, take people out of their places and say, our way of life is better. We helped you. Mm. Okay. Well, We'll see if it's better. Uh, oh, so no. Hare Krishna is not a person. This is actually a religion. That's, a, that's the name of a religion. Oh, no. So um, we don't actually know who saved him specifically. The, just the religion. You know, it's kind of like so the they Christians. they saved him. They saved, they saved him. <laughs> um, it's taken up under multiple names. It's called Mantra or Maha Mantra. And I, I can't find too much information about it. I wonder if it's like a really tightly knit thing and they don't like share information. So it's probably a cult. I don't know if it's a cult. It is apparently very popular in India, uh, Malaysia, Uganda, and Kenya, I think. Is it a sect of any of the main religions? I have no idea. Interesting. <laughs> I have no idea. And it gets, it, gets, it gets weirder. So the Krishna also gave shelter to other street children. So they rescued them too. But in order to stay with the Hare Krishna, I don't know if it's Hare either. I just assume it's not pronounced Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. That's probably Hare. Hare Krishna. However, uh, in order to stay with them, George would have to convert. Of course. So that's exactly how all mission trips go. We will give <laughs> you the help that you need if, if you, you worship you our Lord. Worship our Lord. Uh, but George adjusted quickly and was said to have found comfort in the Krishnas. He soon became Krishna Balaram. 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 Um, now, well, looking that up, Balaram is like was like the right hand of Krishna. So I, I, I think what they're kind of trying to say is he was like a priest, pretty much, for okay. that religion. That's what, that's what I think. Moving up the ranks. Moving up the ranks, yeah. No, so it, there's many articles that suggest that he was a priest, and there's many articles that don't talk about it at all. We also don't know how this religion works. So. We also don't. Yeah, you know, I couldn't find anything on it. I, but I didn't put that much research into it, because again, this, these are just loose ends. Yep. They get tied up later. That's so right. <laughs> where did my mouse go? All right. Um, so with the Hare Krishna, uh, George was able to complete his primary and secondary school education. Uh, he completed what they call the O levels and A levels. So that's primary and secondary school, O, o levels and A levels. Uh, and he did that in the year, uh, by, by the year, sorry, 1980 following high school. He joined the Kenyan police training college. Oh, good. Kinga J- <laughs> Join a religion. King- then we're going to get you into the police. <laughs> well, this, no, this is funny though. He's, he, uh, it's called King. Kinganjo, Kinganjo in Kenya. Uh, and it says that he studied policing and criminal investigation. So I don't know what police, I didn't know police. So he went into school and he was like, oh man, all that stuff I did, definitely not good. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> so. He, he, he was uh, pretty successful as a policeman and was eventually promoted to an inspector, like, wow. a, like a detective. He was a promoted to a detective. Inspector Gadget. Now, this is the great thing about this article. There's just a period after that. He, right? he, was, he was promoted to an, an investigator, an inspector. And then that promptly is followed by George fled the country and settled in the United Kingdom in 1990. He started investigating, and he did not like what he found. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't worry. So now in the UK, uh, George would study law and other subjects. Uh, by the end of his academic career, he would achieve a staggering 17 degrees. He would study at colleges like Wolverhampton, 
London SOAS, which I think is probably schools of the arts and science or something like that. Uh, Warwick University, Westminster University, UOL, Birkbeck University of London or University of Law. I'm not sure. Something like that. Uh, and, I, and I, again, I would have looked those up, but it doesn't matter. So many schools. <laughs> so many schools. Yeah. So many. Um, so he had, to, he had to find a way to pay for all this education. Nah. Supposedly, he paid for this education by, quote, digging graves and working as a night security guard. I'm sure they had a lot of graves that needed to be dug, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of bodies. So, so um, he was in school for, for law and different things. What um, year was this again? This was now 1990, when he finished his 17 degrees. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, so he began practicing law in the UK and even opened his own law firm that dealt with immigration. Uh, he did all this only, only two decades. He got 17 degrees and opened a business in two decades. I can't find any information on that law firm. I can't find any information Obviously on that. Obviously, it was very successful. Yeah. He eventually relocated to the United States. Doesn't say why. And he enrolled in an LLM program at the University of Baltimore. He was probably, like, really into grunge, and he was like, man, the 90s in the U.S. look really fun. I want to, um, you I know. I want to go be an LLM. I want to listen to the Goo Goo Dolls, you know? I want to wear a lot of <laughs> denim and, um, you know, black eyeliner, but they won't let me do it here in the U.K. Right, yeah. So he also worked, <laughs> he also worked as a, quote, educationist. And later was an yes, adjunct. I am a bakist, <laughs> actually. A bakist. Um, uh, I really wanted to just, I wanted them to go full bore. I'm a professional <laughs> bakist. Bakist? I am the best bakist. And um, actually, I I'm a work, butcherist. I work, I work with, at the butcher. I work with computers. Uh, I am a computerist. I'm a computer. I wanted them to say educationalist. Educational. But they did not. <laughs> said educationist. And later was an adjunct professor of law at the American Heritage University of Southern California. Wow. He was only an adjunct? An adjunct professor, yeah. An, so a, at this an, point... An adjunct? Adjunct. An ad, adjunct. <laughs> an ad, it's just adjunct. <laughs> Um, I know I wrote that was, it was being funny. It's being this is a an funny adjunct. podcast. He was an adjunct. Anyway, he's so, got a lot of adjunct in his trunk. By this point, that article I just found like there's no way this like this doesn't make any sense. An educationist who the who the hell wrote this right? So anyway, moving forward, obviously somebody from Britain. <laughs> No, no, we find out. Oh, no. So in, Did he write it? No. In 2010, George Wajakoya returned to Kenya and established, I, I wrote an actual law firm, just because, again, I don't know if that first one existed or not. It might. I just don't know. But this one was called uh, Luchiri & Co. Advocates, and this business is still operational today. It has a website. Looks pretty official. It also looks a little bit sketchy, like maybe a really small court. Like maybe Enrique would get. <laughs> like maybe, a maybe lawyer. one of his degrees was in graphic design. Graphic design. But he, yeah. you know, he, he did like one computer web design class and he was like, yeah, I have 17 degrees. I can make my own website. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so that has been in operation for what seems like probably 10 years or so. Uh, now, in present, as of 2022, George Wajakoya is a faculty member at the Institute of Migration at the University of Nairobi and is a law lecturer teaching international law at the United States International University in Africa. <laughs> in international, in Af inter Afri international. Quotes, quotes. Club. <laughs> uh, so Did he make that title himself? <laughs> I don't know. So he teaches at a university in the United States, as well as a university in Kenya, as well as running his business in Kenya. He is listed as one of the attorneys on his we own website. Pick a hobby. I don't know how he works in Kenya and the United States at the same time. He said, I want to do all the things. I want to live in all the places <laughs> and do all the things. But if that wasn't enough... Oh, boy. In June of 2022, Wajakoya was cleared by Kenya's electoral body to run for president of Kenya. Oh, my God. No way. 
And that brings us to the actual story. And that's why it's important that he was born in Kenya. Right. <laughs> that's why it's important. So now I scroll back up here. So we're going to go back through this now. Because we're going back to Kenya. <laughs> in Nairobi, Joy George joined the street children, right? We talked about that. And he learned to trade. He was likely stealing and participating in drug trading. Oh, no. That habit would later provide the background for his entire political campaign. Uh, he soon became uh, Krishna Balaram. <laughs> Only a few records uh, suggest that George is actually a priest, but it does not seem to be an agreed upon fact if he is or not. Uh, it is my guess and the notion of the public that this is a lie simply to help him gain more political traction and look like a more respectable man. Oh, no. He studied policing and criminal investigation. This is a big one. And was promoted to investigator. George was said to have gone on to be promoted to investigate. Sorry, I, I, I wrote that twice. Um, and he claims that he was placed in charge of collecting evidence. Uh, sorry, in collecting intelligence on the death of the late foreign affairs minister, Robert Oku. The reason he had to flee Kenya is that his supposed investigation is believed to be a cover up for his likely involvement in the murder of Robert Oku. Oh, it goes all the way to the top. And it was proved that he was never actually promoted to an investigator. Oh, no. So he made up an entire story. Did he even get 17 degrees? (laughs) I bet he only got seven. (laughs) He made up an entire story about what actually happened to this guy that involved him, like, falling and breaking his ankles and he couldn't get away from the people that were attacking him. And this is all under the speculation that he is an investigator, which was proven to be not true. He was never an investigator. He wasn't supposed to be investigating this. Mm. And it turns out that... Robert died from a bullet wound. He was shot. So and he, nothing lined he, he up at all. He missed that. He, he wasn't a very good Probably investigator. If it is he believed didn't... that he's the one that shot him. Well, he obviously <laughs> didn't see the bullet wound. So I don't... I, I think that both disqualifies him as an investigator, even if he was one. I mean, he's not very good. No. <laughs> Well, so, it was a cover-up because it was believed that he killed that person. Well, I understand, but if he was claiming that he really was an, an investigator, investigator and he missed like, that... What a strange thing to be like... To just pretend well, no, you're an I investigator. Didn't, I don't, oh, I didn't like, see He could have just stayed a police officer. You know what I mean? Like He didn't need to claim that he was an investigator. He had to lead it so he could I go, um, Everybody, you're uh, listening to me and... Yeah. Uh, I know exactly. Don't look right don't here. Don't look at the don't, body. No, but no, clearly don't, you his don't ankles t- are broken. I'm in charge here. <laughs> his ankles excuse, are broken. Excuse me. I'm in charge here. I'm the investigator. Okay. Do not look at that one spot on the back of his head. No, nope. the bullet wound. Yeah. Nope. You cannot look there. You can't look there. But obviously, see his 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 feet go forward. That's what feet Which do. It, no, 90 degrees. I'm the investigator. Okay, so yeah, I know for a fact that that means he tripped and freak accident. You see this, um, the, the skin on yeah. his knee? Uh-huh. That means he fell. Oh. Yeah. Yep. His kneecaps are broken. It looks like he was beaten. Uh, that's exactly what happens when somebody falls down the stairs. Would right. you like me to demonstrate? No, no, we don't need to. I, stop looking at that. Nope, you can't look at the back of his head. There's nothing there to see. That's there's actually a bullet, just a, a that's a that's exit? a birthmark. It's um a, a it's hole? very there's embarrassing. A, is it don't, like the Matrix thing where they shove the? Don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on the topic of his degrees, uh, the writer of this work, the writer of this article, contradicts themselves in this own article saying that he had 12 degrees, and later on in the article saying that he had 16 degrees. Uh, According to some sources, George had as many as 17 degrees, and the lowest reported amount of degrees is 12, 12 of which are listed here. Um... Diploma in French. Bachelor of Laws. Certificate in Comparative Laws slash Master of Laws. Masters of Laws in Law and Development. This sounds like somebody like wrote a list and they have never been to a college. Like Certificate in Refugee and Business Law. That's not a degree. That's a certificate. LPC, 2000 to 2001. What? Okay. I don't know. Master of Laws, U.S. Law. Laws. <laughs> uh, honoris Causa. Postgraduate Diploma in Law. 
PhD that's candidate what, okay, that's, is listed as a that, degree. That's PhD two, candidate. Uh, that's two degrees so far. M Phil. M P H I, but it's capitalized in such a way that it looks like M Phil. Postgraduate diploma student. Okay. That's 12 of his 17 Three degrees. of those are the same thing that are just said in different ways. And some of them are like one year. Actually, some of them are in the same year. Some of them are one year apart. I mean, you can get multiple degrees in a year, but like those are just like he took one class and then called it a degree. Oh my gosh. He was like, yep, I got my certificate in law. So, degree. So with all that in mind, uh, the prior uh, biography that I just read of Wajikoya. He's like, was no, posted. no, no, I got 11. I got, a, I got all the no, degrees. No, actually, if you look 16. at that, I got 12. Actually. And if you look at this one, I, I actually, I got 17. Degrees. Degrees. And it, and it was just in degrees. two decades. Just call them degrees. It was in two decades. I did that in two decades. <laughs> and what? I opened a business. What? And, uh, yeah. We oh, and I did it. all of these other things and y'all suck. And I was an investigator. Boom. I thought you killed that guy. Didn't you kill that guy? N- he, I told you, he <laughs> fell in a freak accident. You got, I'm the investigator. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Wajikoya, so the, the, uh, the biography on Wajikoya was posted on a website hosted in Kenya. It was likely written by an advocate for Wajikoya's presidency. There are several loose ends that were not described in detail and conflicting facts, and uh, we just went through those. So, did uh, did did his campaign manager also falsify his degrees? Because like he clearly doesn't know what he's doing if I don't he know comes if he up has with... a campaign manager. Uh, was was he who was the one that that wrote the article? Then we don't know. I think it was him. <laughs> I guess is I think he was like name as well. this man is so brilliant and wonderful and would make a great president for Kenya. <laughs> Bye, anonymous. So, it just gets it just gets more fun. Oh god, it gosh. just gets more fun. So George Luchiri Wajikoya is now running for president of Kenya. It is said that he is not likely to win, as there are many other bigger parties of electees that have a much bigger campaign. I don't push. know. Nobody thought Trump was going to win. Well, so but in this case, he's like the third party. Oh. So it's like, he's like, he's like Joe Jorgensen. Joe Jorgensen, yeah. He, for that, those of you that don't know, that was a person <laughs> that ran for president that you could have chose instead of Trump. <laughs> or Biden. Or Biden. Or Biden. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's pretty much like third party at this point. Uh, George wishes, or, oh gosh, I just got to get ready for this. <laughs> oh no. George wishes to coerce the younger Kenyan crowd to vote for him by promoting his campaign of, quote, marijuana and hyena testicles. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he said we're going to get high and hyena you know, testicles. testicles. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the ganja solution. George believes that the export of medical cannabis, in quotes, and rare animal organs will help to settle Kenya's near $70 billion debt with China. Quote, hyena testicles are considered a delicacy. (laughs) Describe my face right now. (laughs) Um, I have no words. (laughs) Quote, I've created a new tribe. A new era. (laughs) A new world order. (laughs) Known as the Ganja Tribe, these politicians... He, he's like, I'm Elon Musk, and I created the testicla. <laughs> the testicla. <laughs> uh, and when you honk the horn, it goes... <laughs> <laughs> that was my best impersonation of a hyena laugh. <laughs> we should just bring Jess in. <laughs> uh, we can't post this now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, Love um, you, Jessa. Quote, I've created a new tribe known as the Ganja Tribe. These, and he's talking about politicians, uh, they have helicopters, they have money, they have painted cars. I don't even have a single poster. If I showed you the amount of money I have, you would laugh. George, I think we're going to laugh no matter what. George, 
buddy. <laughs> George is a business owner and supposedly has multiple professions across the, across the globe as a professor and at 70 degrees, blah, 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 but has not disclosed his net worth. Nobody knows how much money this guy actually has. I just want you to know you can be a business owner and not have any money. <laughs> This is true. You can make an incorporation. You can incorporate yourself right now. You can be Nicholas Jankowski LLC. Well, that's what we're going to list this podcast on. Technically, a business owner, even though your business doesn't do anything. So, George Wajakoya is now 62 years old. Wajakoya, more like, why'd you come here? Like, what the. (laughs) And he preaches the ideals of the Ganja Solution to nightclubs and small public squares. He said, we're going to get turned and Apparently, we're going to vote and we're going to vote. And we're going to vote. <laughs> Most importantly, we're going to we're going to we're going to vote. How are you all doing tonight? Do you have your registration <laughs> done for your voting? <laughs> you got everybody here because he, if everybody's <laughs> registered, we can party. He apparently is like really popular in the nightlife. Like for some reason people actually I'm sure that like, they love him that. because he's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Uh, while wearing a do rag and blaring reggae music from his car, George pitched his candidacy to onlookers and passersby. Quote, and this is again, he was talking about medical cannabis. That's his campaign. We shall go to the state house and smoke it around to remove the colonial impurities. <laughs> We've come in with the ganja solution. Wajakoya the fifth. All right, Bob Marley, let's go. Wajikoya. We get in front and we're gonna get some hyenas. Testicles and we're Test- gonna save all the Kenya. <laughs> so Wajikoya the fifth uh, refers to him being the fifth president of Kenya. That's oh. the idea. So <laughs> he, he would be the fifth president of Kenya if he were elected. Uh, Other policies on his manifesto include federalizing the government, renegotiating Kenya's debt with China, and hanging people found guilty of corruption. Oh. (laughs) Oh, yeah, bud, you sound less like a president, more like a dictator. Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) All those opposed? Hang. Hang. (laughs) George Wajikoya now has 2% of the vote following the two heavy hitters, Raila... Odinga and Deputy President William Ruto, uh, but it is said that this percentage could get percentage sorry <clears throat> could give him leverage with the leading candidates to get his ideals into office, even if he is not voted in. In other words, he has enough people backing him that if he made deals with the running candidates, they could kind of he could kind of sneak some stuff in there. Right, know? that's how um um <laughs> bribery. <laughs> well, I, I mean that's how lobbying works. Yeah, that's how you know corporations can keep taxes for themselves lower but like <clears throat> it's really nice to know that we're not the only nation yeah. whose government is completely fucked that's so true because i mean it's a toss-up this guy or trump what is the <laughs> i think i would have voted for him too i don't know i don't know <laughs> he sounds kind of cool he's you know kinda, yeah he's 62 and he's smoking doinks he's and... like any objections hanged hanged <laughs> But, you know, cut loose blood. Let's get some (laughs) marijuana up in here. Uh, However, recent news indicates a petition is being signed to remove George from the race on the ground that he is, or uh, sorry, he, quote, is not mentally sound. Yeah. And blaming the Kenyan electoral body for allowing him to run without psychological evaluation. Honestly, I mean, he kind of sounds like a psychopath. He just like does whatever he wants. Well, he, he's, he's obviously a pathological killed, liar. Pa- a, is a, a, allegedly killed one of their le- previous leaders. He's an alleged murderer. He he's uh, he's clearly a pathological liar. Like <laughs> this is the thing what, is, I don't know if he is or not. Like it's very possible that he could have some degrees, but there's none no of way the of ones that it. are listed actually make sense, except for the fact that he says he has postgraduate degree in in law. And yeah, that's that's the only one that remotely sounds like a degree. The other ones don't aren't aren't degrees they're like yeah maybe he went to school for that but i think the only agreed upon fact is that he did dig graves oh good that's the only we thing. know for sure he actually did pick up a shovel at one point in his life he we did don't pick up a we shovel. don't know if the only time that he did that was like 
to dig graves or to kill somebody. Um, but it, it, like, yeah, to, we to, don't know if the no, graves oh were God. for people who are actually already dead. After he killed the the guy, he took his body to the UK and buried it. That's why he had to flee. That's why he fleed, and, and that's, he, why, he that's why he dug graves. <laughs> Oh my god, we're figuring out his whole thing. It goes all the way to the top. All the way. Okay. Um, Okay. So uh, they're angry that they let him run without psychological evaluation. I think everybody should be psychologically evaluated before they run for president. Yeah, Bailey was talking about that. She was saying that there needs to be an age limit. There, there definitely needs to be an age limit. I mean, like the the age restriction right now that you have to be thirty five to run. Sort of makes sense. You have to be 35 to 36 years old <laughs> to run. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. I mean, if there's a cutoff for regular jobs, you know. True. 65 is when you're like, mm, maybe you should think about stopping work. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the petitioners, um, the petitioners, parishioners, his parishioners. No. His parishioners, because no. he was a priest. He was, apparently, supposedly. We don't know. Uh, their concerns lay with his threats to hang corrupt members of the government, arguing that it is inhumane. I Can't mean, imagine why. it's a it's... little bit medieval. <laughs> um, I don't, I think What's that... wrong with it? What's wrong? Well, I think that the last hanging was like a, unfortunately, I think it was like a minute ago. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> At least in the U S I know that the last one was like a little too recently for comfort, but oh, I, I do hanging like he yeah. specifically said that yeah. and not just like putting them to death and this was a th- yeah and this was a second article that sp- said specifically uh, it was specifically about the petition that's where this one came from and that was specifically said that the the, the that, fact that he's choosing the method of killing for yeah. people i mean that it's pretty much a threat it, it is but also like it's he's got that thought process of a, of, of a of a serial killer like right. like that he's already planned how sure his he probably, opposition is going to die he probably learned about it in school there are plenty of <laughs> other ways to execute people why that one well that's what they talked about at the university of london Does, law <laughs> is he like very aware that there's like a plethora of rope in kenya oh <laughs> yeah um anyway <laughs> Like, I thought his preferred method of killing was bullet... Oh, wait, no. He oh, didn't gee. do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, no. Uh, it, allegedly. It pushing people down the stairs. Wait, no, it wasn't him, though. It, it wasn't... No, oh, no. It was, he was No, he was just the investigator. Oh, the right. Sorry, I forgot that was the connection. <laughs> oh. uh, among other concerns with his 10-point manifesto and obsession with marijuana, they also cite how they do not know where his allegiance lies, as his parents were not naturally born Kenyans, and he spent a majority of his life in the United States and United Kingdom was said to be at one point a citizen of the United Kingdom. I found out later on that they are actually trying to get in contact with, um, what is that called? In another country, you have a... a, The, the, uh, um... Neither one of us is going to be able to remember what it's called. No, I, I know what it's called. The, um... The, uh... Fuck! (laughs) I'm embassy not, embassy thank you i wanted to say envoy and i was like that's not right the, <laughs> the kenyan envoy. embassy the kenyan in embassy in the uk i guess okay and they're trying to figure out if he was actually um made a citizen of the uk because if he was made a citizen of the uk then that would eliminate him from the running oh he can't oh i guess like dual citizenship isn't yeah. really a thing so if he is a citizen of the uk he can't run but they uh they're not responding they're being they're being intransigent and he is saying he's like he's like shouting out at them and saying they're wasting wasting their time because they're not going to tell them anything, which is pretty suspicious. I mean, the <laughs> fact that they're like, we have to prove that he's not from here makes me worry that they're actually worried that he has a chance. Yeah. Well, I think that he probably does if he if he gets oh, his ideals man. in. Oh man, people suck. I mean, but it, it's true though. It, it's the younger crowd. All these pictures of him chanting with people—they're like they're like teenagers. They're like kids. Well, they're I would like hope that they would be stuff. like, "Oh man, you're so dope!" But then when they go to vote, they're like, "Man, that guy was fucking nuts." <laughs> well, they're not the ones being hung, so they don't, they don't fucking care. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
So um, he's like, yeah, I'm going to be the president of Kenya, but now anybody who says I'm not going to be president is dead. Yeah, By the way, yeah. I'm staying president. So uh, George denounced these claims, saying they were, quote, out to malign his name. Nobody is deporting me anywhere. I am Kenyan, born in Kenya with very high, I think that word is epistemology. Or I thought you were just going to stop it. Very high. Very high. And then he's like, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. No, wait, no, I'm not high. I'm is not it, high. Not right now. What is that word? It, it looks like epistemology, but I wonder if the E is silent. Epistemology. Epistemology. Epistem- epistemology in terms of academia. We're going to look it up. Ep- epistemology. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, no, no. That that looks correct. Epistemology. Epistemology. What does that word mean? I put it in there not knowing what it means. That's good. <laughs> Among the other things that I didn't research on this story. Though. <laughs> I was correct. It's uh, philosophy. Philosophy. Uh, so, he is born in Kenya with very high epistemology in terms of academia. It was 17 degrees. Uh, <laughs> I have been... Uh, this part just doesn't make any sense. I've I been, have 98 degrees. <laughs> Feels like 98 in here right now, actually. 98 degrees. <laughs> Get it? It's temperature. <laughs> uh, so he says, I have been outside the country. I have suffered so much. I tried to run. That's the end of the quote. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Was he like, I've been outside the country. It sucks. So I came back. I suffered. Maybe I suffered so much and I tried to run. Maybe that's, maybe that's what he's saying. I tried to run from... From the, from the UK and the United I States. I mean, I, it was I so get, horrible. <laughs> I get running away from the United States. Yeah, no. Actually, what's funny is it sounds like what I what I found is that it his his family's all over the place. Like I think his kids live in the UK and his wife lives in the US, and he lives in Kenya. And he was like, I gotta get away from you guys because you're really harsh and mamello. Yeah. I'm gonna go smoke with my friends in Kenya. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so he dismissed, okay, so, sorry, there was another thing on that article that said petitioners were calling him a state project. I, I'm not sure what that means, but apparently it, it's denouncing him, and so he dismissed I mean, that. I, I imagine if our parents called you a project. Okay, well, yeah, that's kind of true. It's like calling someone an accident. <laughs> no, it's more like calling you, like, oh, man, this kid's a project. a project. You gotta put in a lot of work to make this one work. So, so they said, so they said he's a state project. And he said, I am nobody's project. I am my own project. <laughs> and the people... <laughs> I am working on myself. I'm working on myself. And you the people, back off. And the people who follow me, I am on the ballot and I am winning the elections. And that's it. That's George Luchiri Wajikoya. I'm on the ballot. I'm high as fuck. <laughs> we got hyena testicles. Hell Suck yeah. Suck my nuts. <laughs> And the hyenas. And nuts. the hyenas nuts. So yeah, that's George Wajakoya. Bob Marley plays in the distance. <laughs> actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure they said that he like he does actually like Bob Mar- Bob Marley. Yeah, because he was listening to, <laughs> reggae, listening to music. reggae music. That's the only reggae artist I know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's like the only one you need. Don't come after me. I we don't listen to reggae. I don't really listen. To We're not about that life. We're not voting for George Wajakoya. Yeah, I'm not like Kenya. it's too Rastafar away from my taste. Ross Jafar. Rastafari is the. Never mind. Uh, yeah. So what do you what do you think about George? Holy <laughs> shit! And the, again, the clickbait title was marijuana and like, hyena testicles. <laughs> everybody, vote on your phones now. Who's the craziest president? Trump, Putin, or this guy? Or George Wajakoya. George Wajakoya. <laughs> Judge George, watch out, uh, also, Koya. Uh, if you need, um, sorry, if you need any help uh, legally, the sponsor of today's episode is <laughs> Luciri <laughs> and Advocates. Uh, their website is available. <laughs> it's available um, because he can't keep up the domain, so <laughs> you can buy it if you want it. He doesn't have enough money. He spent it all on. It like looks weed. Sem- it, really. It looks somewhat professional, but like, like the pictures of their office, just it looks like just like a house, just is, like a really like, crappy house. The icon for the website, like a picture of him and Snoop Dogg. Like, <laughs> no, it's like a legit. It's like a legit thing. It has like a 
I don't. He's remember. like, I'm not it, a regular really lawyer. I'm a if cool anything, lawyer. It looks, it looks like a college, like a university logo. It, it sounds like. like he went to college. He got all these degrees, but the real thing that he came back with was from weed. all of his travels was that California legalized marijuana, and he was for it. He was for it. And that's, that's, maybe that's why he went to the United States after he graduated. He was like, man, they got <laughs> legal drugs over there. Yeah, we should do that in in Kenya. Uh, we wow. sell cars. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> you've never heard that? No. No? Okay, that's funny. All right. Wow. That was good. Thanks for listening. That was that was good, Thanks. guys. Send us your um, opinions about presidents. Yeah. I want to hear all of them, actually. Yeah, I kind of want to hear them. I want to hear all of your harsh post criticisms. A, post a comment if you voted for Joe Jorgensen. Yeah, post a comment if you voted for Joe Jorgensen because... Um, post a comment if you're Kenyan and you're voting for George... <laughs> Wajikoya. Wajikoya. And, um, Wajikoya the fifth! Yeah, our <laughs> our proceeds for today's episode go towards George Wajikoya's uh, campaign. Campaign, um, yeah. Yeah. Because if you saw the amount of money he has, you would laugh. Yeah, and who doesn't love a good laugh? Who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hyenas. They're not laughing now that their testicles are gone. <laughs> <laughs> they're laughing a lot higher pitched. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ending there. Okay. <laughs>